Good evening, mga ka-break time. And once again, magandang gabi, Winnipeg. And magandang umaga, Pilipinas. And welcome back to Break Time Bible Study by Kuya Oli. Ang isayam! So tonight, very interesting ang topic natin. Because tonight, ang topic natin is the part 2 series of love. And tatawagin natin tong absence without love is nothing. So ready na ba kayo? Mga ka-break time. Ilabas na uli ang mga papel at ball pen. Woohoo! And of course, hag nilabas yun na ang mga pen and paper, make it sure nakatabi niyo na ang inyong mga kapamilya. Mga asawa, mga kapatid, mga kabirds. Okay. Ready na ba kayo mag-discuss sa isa't isa? Before we start, again, once again, my name is Kuya Oli. And I do Bible study every Wednesday night, Winnipeg time, Canada time, and 10 a.m. in the Philippines. So mga kapilipinas ko dyan, mga kabarangay. Welcome to Kuya Oli's Break Time where we study the Word of God. Ayan. So, let's start with a short prayer. Heavenly Father, we just want to praise and thank you once again for this day. Lord God, please give us your wisdom tonight as we study your Word, Lord God. Let your Holy Spirit speak on my behalf, Lord God. And may our viewers and watchers all over the world, Lord God. Understand, Lord God, and be touched by the Holy Spirit. Be touched by the Word so that we can use it to our day-to-day -day lives and that it can better our life, Lord God, for your glory and honor alone. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. Ayan, ready na ba kayo? Okay, ang una natin pag-uusapan is about the myth of spiritual maturity. Wow, napaka-interesante naman yung topic na yan. Anya tayo, mwah, mwah. Number one, is knowledge. Alam nyo, knowledge sometimes make us proud. Let's see the verse. In 1 Corinthians 8.1, it says, Yes, we know that we all have knowledge about this issue. But while knowledge makes us feel important, it is love that strengthens the church. Anyone who claims to know all the answers doesn't really know very much. But the person who loves God is the one whom God recognizes. So be careful, lahat tayo, even I, I am knowledgeable about Bible. Let us all be careful. Mag-ingat tayo, especially the ones who have Bible knowledge. Kasi sometimes it make us proud, it make us uh, self-righteous. So be careful about that number one myth of spiritual maturity. It doesn't mean you have knowledge. You have, you are spiritually mature. Yuhu, anya sayo. Number two, myth of spiritual maturity. Zeal. Alam nyo ba ang zeal? Yung kapag nagpunta ka sa store, may mga zeal. Eh, hindi po yun. Ang zeal is I want to serve God. Wow. Myth din pala yun ng spiritual maturity. Bakit? Ang sabi dito, I know what enthusiasm they have for God in Romans 10.2. But it is misdirected zeal. Yung mga nagsiserve dyan, minsan kinocompare natin yung sarili natin sa iba. Okay? Na we're serving, they are not. So we are righteous. No, 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 no. That's a myth. 
Number three, activities were so busy volunteering, helping others, doing outreach. But in Matthew 6, 1, it says here, watch out. Watch out. Oy, mga nanonood dyan, watch out kayo dyan, ha? <laughs> yung mga nakaupo dyan, yung mga relax na relax, watch out. Kasi ang sabi dito, don't do your good deeds publicly. To be admired by others. Alam mo yun, yung pinupost natin sa Facebook, pinapakita natin sa mga kaibigan natin that we're giving something, we're helping others. Oy, be careful. You're being misdirected. You thought that you're helping to encourage, but actually, you are becoming proud of yourself. Oy, careful tayo dyan. And number four, success. My career, having a lot, lots of discipleship group, my ministry, I'm successful. Like for example, me, I'm teaching you guys. And pumapasok sa utak ko ng galing-galing ko. Whoa, be careful. Ang sabi dito, in 2 Chronicles 26.16, it says, But when he had become powerful, sino dyan yung magagandang posisyon sa trabaho? Yung magagaling, matatalino, you become powerful. He also became proud. Oh my gosh! That's the biggest mistake. When you become proud because you have lots of money, because you're powerful, because you think you have everything in the world. Guys, ang sinabi dito, but when he had become powerful, he also became proud, which led to his downfall. Guys, ingat kayo sa success. That's Second Chronicles 26.16. You know, as you become powerful, as you have so many uh, discipleship group in your team that you're leading, when you go up, you should learn to continuously be humble. That's the key of real success. Humility. Even though you have everything, you always show to the world that you have the humility. That you can be rich, they can talk to you, you can talk to them as well. Yeah. And next is possession. Look at my position now. I'm the president of the company. I'm an operations manager. I'm the leader of the church. It says in Luke eleven forty three, what sorrow awaits you, Pharisees? Oh, you hypocrites. For you love to sit in the seats of honor in the synagogues and receive respectful greeting as you walk in the marketplaces. Remember, it is God who give us the position, who give us success. And be reminded that all your gifts came from God. You came here with nothing. Remember that always. Okay, I just want to point out, as you go up in the ladder, you should continuously lower and be humble in everything. Oy! Ang kit-kit mo talaga! Mga break time dyan! Oh my gosh! Next one. Is spiritual gifts... Using your spiritual gifts in the wrong way by serving your own interest. Marami dyan, guys. I'm not saying um, lahat tayo. No, I'm saying a lot of us, tayo nagkakamali tayo using our spiritual gift. Sometimes we sing song, okay, to make us known para maging proud tayo. Sometimes we have the gift of communication. We are very good in selling. 
to the point that sometimes we lie. <laughs> we are a good boss. That's our gift to manage. But sometimes we manage for our own interest. It should always be the spiritual gift should always be used to serve others. Wow, ganda. And of course, lastly, is sacrifice. Alam mo yun, in 1 Corinthians 13.3, it says here, If I gave everything to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it, but if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. Wow! It's so powerful. Bali wala ang lahat. If I don't love... Alam nyo, I just want to give an example with everything that I said. We go to church every Sunday. We attend Bible study. We help others. But if love is not seen in us, everything is nothing. Remember that without love, everything is nothing. Guys, so these are the spiritual meat of a mature Christian. Guys, ha, mature ang pinag-uusapan natin. These are all myths. Remember that love is so powerful. Sabi nga sa 1 Peter 4, 4, 8, ang sabi doon, Above all else, love one another because love covers a multitude of sin. Kahit gano'n ka pa nagkasala, but if you learn how to love genuinely, you're a good person. You're a good in front of the eyes of our Lord Jesus. Yan! And now, what are the key in loving? When you do something, when you're working, when you're helping others, when you're encouraging someone, when you are doing something in the ministry, when you are trying to go on a career path, a higher position, your highest motivation should always be love. Oh, ulitin ko ah. Your highest motivation should always be Anya sa'yo, love. Yan naman. And number two, Love should always be expressed in deed and your behavior. Tandaan nyo ha, deed, behavior, express it well. Ang ganda naman. Wow, so those are the meat of spiritual maturity. We now go on to the greatest commandment. Let us read to Matthew 22, verse 34 to 40. Before I continue, I just want to post this question to everybody. Ready na ba mga papel at papers nyo? Mga kabreak time! Ang tanong, when was the last time you showed genuine love. To whom did you show it? And what was the result when you show that particular love to that person? Oh, I'll give you a few minutes ha, to talk it over amongst yourselves. Yung mga nanonood dyan, sa Pilipinas, sa Winnipeg, Yung mga nakahiga dyan sa kanila mga kama, sa couch na kaupo, with their friends. Ask it. Discuss it amongst yourselves. Okay? I'll give you one minute to discuss it. And then, we'll continue 
with our topic about absence of love is nothing without genuine love. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. One minute. Oh, nasagot nyo na ba? Ako, ang sagot ko po dyan, the last time I showed love, is uh, yesterday. When I helped my wife, kasi nagde-decor po yung wife ko sometimes, no? Tumatanggap po siya ng mga backdrop decoration. I help her na kahit na masama pakiramdam ko, I drive her dun sa uh, place and location kung saan po siya magsiset up ng kasama niya, Lord. So, yun po, I, I have to wait until 12 midnight hanggang matapos siya. That's how I showed my love for my wife. And I always tell her na mahal na mahal ko siya. And in response, she show her love to me. Pag umuwi ako galing dialysis, pinagluluto ako ng wife ko. Yon ang aking sagot. Now we go to our main highlight of the topic. After discussing myth of spiritual maturity, now we move on to our topic, which is what is the greatest commandment? It is found in Matthew 22. Verse 34 to 40, kung ninyo na yung mga Bible nyo at sabay-sabay natin basahin. And with respect and honor to our God, if you can just stand up just to honor our Lord or just bow down your head. And let's read it all. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees with his reply, they met together to question him again. Who are they questioning? They are questioning our Lord Jesus Christ. One of them, an expert in religious law, tried to trap him with the question, Teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? You may nagtanong na isang Pharisees. Jesus replied, guys, makinig kayo dito. Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. Reminder, guys, greatest commandment, love God. Number two, a second is equally important, guys. Imagine the word equally, kaparehong important, which is love your neighbor as yourself. Meaning, sino ba yung mga neighbors mo? Other people, your wife, your children, your friends, your co-workers, the people around you, your enemies. You have to love them. And it says here, equally important as yourself, kung paano mo minamahal ang sarili mo, ganun din dapat ang pagmamahal mo sa neighbors mo, sa ibang tao, sa wife mo, sa anak mo, sa kaibigan mo, yung mga taong nasaktan mo, yung mga taong nakasakit sa'yo. You should love them the way you love yourself. Remember that. Those are the two Greatest commandment. The first greatest is love God. The second is love others. And then, ang sabi dito, the entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. Grabe, no, guys, ano? Dalawa, two things lang. Na-fulfill mo na yung Bible. It's all about love. Love God. I'm just stressing the out. Love others. But guys, this is a question. How can you love if you haven't experienced it? Yun talagang totoong love. And the only way you can experience love is when you experience God's love. 
Guys, napaka napaka importante nito. Have you really experienced love, God's love in your life? Guys, we all need God's love to experience. We all need God's love so that we can love others genuinely. You know, I just wanted to explain the deeper meaning of the cross. Kasi we always see Oh, yung cross, si Jesus Christ, nagpakamatay for us. That's it. Oh, alam ko yon. But ano ba yung totoong meaning ng cross para maintindihan natin God's love? Okay? I will explain it now. So listen very carefully on how I will explain it. Heavenly Father, give me the grace to fully explain the cross, how I've experienced it. Guys, we all are sinners. Lahat tayo, nung panahon ni Adan, nung nagkasala siya, we became all sinners. And the only way, in the Old Testament, when you sin, you have to offer bulls. You have to offer animals para mapatawad ka, di ba? You have to go to confession para mapatawad ka. In the Old Testament, you have to offer Animals para mapatawad ka ni Lord. But because hindi na kayang bayaran ng kasalanan ng kahit anuman hayop, ang ginawa ng Panginoon, ang ginawa ni God, is pinadala niya ang only begotting Son, which is our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the ultimate sacrifice para mabayaran ang kasalanan ng mundo natin. And the only way that we can be forgiven is by accepting Jesus, professing that Jesus Christ died for your sins, mga ka, break time. Tandaan niyo yan. That Jesus died for your sin para mawala yung kasalanan mo. And just a reminder, Once you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you, imagine this, pag tinanggap po na si Lord bilang tagapagligtas mo, you are now covered by His blood. What happens with the cross? He died for your sins so that you can be made right with God. Ano yung sabi na made right? You are holy in the sight of God because of the shedding of the blood of Christ. And that's the real truth. The real truth is when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are forgiven. You are now holy in front of God. Whatever you do after that, you are still holy. Imagine this. Once you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. When you do something wrong, let's say the next day, you, you were saved by God. Tinanggap mo na si Lord as your Lord and Savior. The next day, napasinungaling ka, napamura ka, napagalitan mo yung anak mo, nagkamali ka sa trabaho, uminit ang ulo mo. Remind yourself that when you lie, Jesus right that for died for that lie. When you shout, Jesus Christ died when you are shouting. What am I trying to point out? Every day na nagkakamali ka dahil tinanggap mo na si Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are covered by his blood. You are made holy in front of the eyes of God. Because guys, hindi kayo makakalapit kay God without you being holy. Because God is holy. And He sent His Son 
to die for your sins, for my sins. Up to now, even though I'm teaching, I'm preaching the Word of God, I'm teaching Bible study, I still tend to lie, I still tend to shout, I still tend to get mad. But out of it, because of God's love, I'm always being purified. I'm always holy in front of God because of the cross. That's the real meaning of love. Kahit ano pang gawin mo, you are holy. You are loved by God because of Jesus Christ's sacrifice. So guys, dun sa mga nanonood ngayon, I just wanna pray for you now. Lahat na may mga pinagdadaanan, yung may mga sakit, yung may mga masasamang pakiramdam dyan, I just wanna pray for you. As we end our Bible study tonight, remember that Jesus Christ loved us so much. God loves us that He gave His only begotten Son to die for us so that we can become holy and we can be saved through God's amazing grace. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, I just want to praise and thank you for today, for this Bible study today. Thank you for teaching me that love is the greatest among all, Lord God. That love fulfills, Lord God, what the Bible is all about, Lord God. Teach me, Lord God, to continuously learn to love you, Lord God. To continuously embrace your love for me. And Lord God, teach me, Lord God, to love others, Lord God. Lord God, patawarin niyo po ako, kami, Lord God. Please repeat after me, guys. Lord God, patawarin niyo po kami sa lahat po, Lord God, na mga nagawa namin kasalanan sa inyo, Panginoon. Please, Lord God, forgive us our sins, Lord God. Lord God, we accept you as our Lord and Savior, Lord God. Save us, Lord God, from our sin. Teach us to do better, Lord God. Be the person, be the Holy Spirit, be the God, Lord God, who will now, Lord God, lead us, Lord God, to a better life, Lord God. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for a renewed life, Lord God. And Lord God, I'm expecting, Lord God, that things are going to change, Lord God, because, Lord God, you love us. And in return, Lord God, you will teach us to love others, Lord God. Thank you for the gift of salvation, for the gift of life, Lord God. Thank you for accepting me as your son, Lord God. And Lord God, I just want to praise and thank you for today's Bible study, Lord God. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. So these are the three questions that you need to discuss. Among yourself, mga ka break time. Woohoo! Number one, what did you learn today about love? Wow, puso. Woohoo! Number two, what areas in your life you need to change so you can better express love in action? Yan. And number three, what is the person you need? To forgive today. Sino yung tao na kailangan patawarin mo na sa puso mo? Dahil matagal na yan. Kailangan matagal na yan. Marilis mo na. And how can you express your love today to that person na pinatawad mo na at humingi ka pa ng tawad? So, those are the three questions that you need to discuss amongst yourself. And once again, maraming maraming salamat po sa lahat ng nanood tonight for our Bible study about the second part of love. Wow! Yan! And I'm so excited because next week, we're gonna discuss the man about relationship. Wow, I'm so excited. So guys, again, once again, this is your Kuya Oli your break time host and 
and see you again next Wednesday for another interesting Bible study topic. Okay, magandang gabi mga ka-break time, magandang gabi Winnipeg, and magandang umaga Pilipinas. This is Kuya Oli saying, Anya sayo! Love you guys. God bless.